Um, thank you for joining us this morning in our webinar on CanOpen. Um, the presentation is roughly about 17 minutes long, and uh, any questions you can just put into your questions panel, and we'll go to them at the end. So we'll get started. Welcome to today's tutorial. Let's get started. Let's take a look at today's agenda. We'll start with a quick review of the CAN chipset. We'll discuss what CanOpen is and why we should use it with the OCS. We'll discuss CanOpen messaging and go through configuration of CanOpen in the OCS. We'll have a demonstration at the end, and as always, we'll finish with a live Q&A session. Let's start with the CAN chipset review. So what is CAN or CAN bus? CAN stands for Controller Area Network. It's a peer-to-peer -peer communications network based on a standard chip that allows microcontrollers and many different types of devices to communicate. From an application standpoint, it thrives in noisy electrical environments such as vehicular and industrial applications. Now we'll quickly compare CAN with Ethernet. CAN was designed for safe data exchange in harsh environments, while Ethernet was designed to transport massive amounts of data in a reasonable time frame. Both devices have huge economies of scale, with billions of chips and devices sold every year. If we look at the strengths and weaknesses of the two, you'll see they complement each other very well. Ethernet has huge bandwidth and supports dozens of protocols. However, you need a lot of source code to utilize Ethernet, and it struggles with collisions and data integrity. CAN has limited bandwidth and support for fewer protocols than Ethernet. However, it's got a very small code footprint, so it can fit into a tiny microprocessor. It has excellent data integrity, error recovery, and collision handling. CAN and Ethernet complement each other very well. So that was a quick review of CAN. Now we'll discuss CAN Open. CAN Open is a standard communications network based on the CAN chip and it's most popular in factory automation. It was developed with motion control applications in mind, but it's not limited to motion control. It is administered by the CAN in Automation Organization, or the CIA. Now we'll compare CAN Open and CSCAN. CAN Open is a standards-based network and is designed for interoperability and multi-access motion control. CSCAN is a network designed by us at Horner. It was designed for efficient data exchange and for easy I.O. expansion with good performance. Although CAN Open and CSCAN are both CAN networks, they have two completely different design goals. CAN Open includes support for peer-to-peer -peer messaging, but it also has a lot of built-in elements of master-slave and client-server so it's highly complex and multifunctional. CSCAN almost purely supports peer-to-peer -peer type messaging, except for output devices like I.O. relay modules. It's really easy to use and is much simpler than CANOPEN. Now we'll discuss why you should use CANOPEN with the OCS. It's interoperable with third-party automation devices not available on CSCAN, and it gives options for motion control. You can add drives, encoders, and integrated stepper motors for a good price. We don't use CanOpen everywhere because it's not that easy to use. We only use CanOpen when we can take advantage of its strengths of interoperability and motion control. Let's discuss which Horner products can utilize CanOpen. The XLE and XLT are useful if you want a CanOpen slave. The X5, XL4, EXL6 and EXLW are capable of utilizing single port CAN Open Master. The XL7, EXL10 and XL Plus can utilize CAN Open Master standard on CAN2. And our Smart Rail is useful for CAN Open Base for I.O. expansion. Now we'll discuss how you can get CAN Open on these devices. For the XLE and XLT, 
as well as the single port XL series products, CanOpen is accessed through a free field firmware update available for download. If you're using a dual CAN port model like an XL7, XL10 or XL Plus, then the standard firmware supports CanOpen on the second CAN port. With the smart rail, you need to order the CanOpen version from the factory through the part number. Now we'll discuss the architecture and the messaging that's available on CanOpen. The application code handles internal control and interfaces to the process hardware. The object dictionary acts as the link between the application code and the CanOpen protocol stack. The CanOpen protocol stack handles all of the communication over CAN. The object dictionary links the application and the network with a list of all information that could be exchanged between the CanOpen network and the application. The addressing is represented in hex with a 16-bit index and an 8-bit sub-index. Device-specific device profiles and manufacturer-specific areas are supported. CanOpen device profiles are one of the most powerful features of CanOpen. There are examples of a few of them on screen, everything from encoders, to pumps, to RFID devices, to energy management devices. The profiles are very useful as they attempt to standardise how similar devices from different manufacturers communicate on the network. Now we'll discuss CanOpen messaging types, also called protocols. There are five different protocols. They are service data object, process data object, network management, error control protocols, and special function protocols. Let's start with the SDO, or service data object protocol. These are messages that are sent on an occasional basis to access any data that's in the CAN Open dictionary. It operates similarly to master slave but technically, it's client-server. Now we'll discuss the PDO, or Process Data Object Protocol. It's used for high priority control and status information with up to eight bytes per message. Now, most devices both transmit and receive PDOs. Some devices, such as encoders, only transmit PDOs. Some devices have fixed or static PDO maps, while others are configurable or variable. For a device with configurable PDOs, the application engineer can map the data that they feel is critical to the application. For slave devices with EDS files, mapped PDO data can be selected from a list during the configuration of the master. PDOs can be triggered by events. There is flexibility in terms of how that PDO data gets transmitted. You can configure an event-driven type trigger for a PDO, which determines when to send data. You can synchronize the transmission to the reception of a message with a cyclic sync-driven transmission. You can have an acyclic sync-driven transmission where the PDO producer determines when the PDO is created, but it is not sent until the next sync pulse is received. Then you have remote transmission request, or RTR driven transmissions, where the PDO consumer sends an RTR to trigger the PDO by the producer. Next, we'll discuss network management. All CanOpen devices support the network management, or NMT state machine. Each state in the NMT state machine defines the communications behavior of the CanOpen device. NMT protocol is driven by the active CanOpen master, which in our case is our OCS. NMT protocol comes with the highest priority ID in a CanOpen system. A slave receiving an NMT message must immediately enter the specified NMT state. NMT messages can be sent to individual slaves or to all slaves using an ID of zero. Now we'll discuss the individual NMT states. 
the device will enter the initialization state after a reset. In the pre-operational state, the device can execute several message types, excluding PDOs. In the operational state, the device can execute all message types. And in a stopped state, a device can only respond to NMT commands. Now we'll discuss error control protocol. This is a simple protocol that allows devices to announce their availability through sending heartbeat messages. The heartbeat cycle time generated by each node is configurable and measured in milliseconds. Devices can monitor the heartbeats of other nodes. There's another error control protocol called node guarding, but it's outdated and not recommended for use. Now we'll discuss the special sync function. Messages can be synchronized between the master and slave in a can open system through sync messaging. A sync producer, who is usually the master, sends a sync message periodically. Sync producers can then use the sync message to trigger an operation such as setting outputs or capturing inputs. The sync protocol is very effective at synchronizing and coordinating multiple devices, such as encoders. The OCS sends out a sync pulse, and every slave receives the sync pulse at exactly the same time. Those that are configured to respond to that sync pulse will use that pulse to capture data and it can respond back with that data. There's actually two parameters you can configure with the sync pulse. On the master side, or the OCS side, there's the communication cycle period, which is the frequency between sync pulses. There's also the synchronous window length, which is the amount of time after the sync pulse is received in which sync triggered PDOs must be sent. If this time window closes, the PDO must not be transmitted. Now we'll discuss the emergency protocol. It's an optional protocol, you don't have to utilize it. This sends a message from a can open device in response to an internal error. Another optional protocol is the timestamp protocol. You can have multiple devices all stay on the same highly synchronized time. It provides a unique network time of day, which is usually provided by the master. Its format is in milliseconds after midnight and days after the 1st of January 1984. Now, we're going to show you how to select can open for a few of our controllers in Seascape. So I'm in Seascape. I've got an XL4 here. Let's go straight into the hardware configuration. Okay, so how do I select CAN OPEN for an XL4? There is no part number. For CAN OPEN from the factory, you would just order a standard XL4 with whatever I.O. option that you want. Like I mentioned earlier in the presentation, you can download free CAN OPEN firmware from the Horner website and then install that firmware to your XL4. And now, on the CAN port, instead of utilizing CSCAN, the first CAN port will now utilize CAN open. So you would go in, and under CAN 1, you would select CAN open instead of CSCAN or J1939. All right, and then you hit the config button. Now, the first time you do this, you're going to be asked to select whether you want can open in your application to be used as a master or as a slave. And if you're talking about an XL4, an XL7, and other similar products, you're almost always going to be using a master. Now, what if I also have some remote I.O. that I need to add to the system as well? Let's say this is an application where I have half a dozen can open encoders where I also need some remote I.O. Well, you'll notice in the tab up here that under CAN1, you now have an option for CAN Open I.O. All right, so if I click on that tab and hit Add, you'll notice a single choice, which is a Smart Rail CAN Open Slave I.O. base. Okay, 
So now I have the exact same dialog boxes that I normally use when I configure Smart Rail, whether I'm configuring it for C-Scan or whether I'm configuring it for Ethernet. It's basically the same. I can configure a base of I.O. with CAN open just like I can with C-Scan, so that's quite convenient. I don't have the options of Smart Sticks or Smart Block or some of the other Horner I.O. family. Smart Rail is my only option. But I do have the ability to have not only CAN open devices on my network, but also Horner Remote I.O. I'm not going to go to the process of configuring this today, so I'll hit cancel here. Alright, so that was an example of how you might select CAN open on an XL4 and how you could add remote I.O. to that same CAN open protocol. Well, what if I have an XL7 instead? So I'll pull up my XL7 program here. Now we'll go back to hardware configuration. In the case of the XL7, I don't need to do any kind of a firmware update because the XL7 has two CAN ports. CAN open is selectable for either ports. But you want to select C-Scan on port 1 and CAN open on port 2. Only with the XL7 you can have CAN open support on both CAN 1 and CAN 2. Much more commonly, C-Scan is on port 1 for adding I.O. etc. and CAN open is on port 2 for handling motion control or interfacing with third party devices. I'm going to hit the config button. This is the first time for this particular program that I've pressed the config button. So this is the choice that I previously mentioned. Do I want to add can open as a master or as a slave? I almost always choose can open master. And then that brings you back to the normal dialog here where you can start the process of configuring can open. So that is the method you would use to select can open for a couple of our Horner products, the XL4 and the XL7. That wraps up today's demonstration. Thank you for attending today's tutorial. The Q&A session will begin shortly. Okay. Um, I'm not currently seeing any questions in, so I shall take you to my screen, which hopefully you can all see now. Um, so today's session was the last session of this year. We are back the 13th of January, as you can see below, with using video with Warner. Um, so we will carry on back in the new year. I'm still not seeing any questions as yet. Um, so in that case, thank you for joining us this far. We've gone through a good shot of webinars at this stage. Um, I hope you all have a lovely Christmas and I hope to see you again in January and uh, we'll carry on there again. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining us this morning and uh, goodbye.